This week we're doing something a little different, we're going for speed over quality and we're painting one of the new Chaos Champions from the Age of Sigma Slaves to Darkness box. Now don't worry, I don't hate Slap Chop, I was doing it before it was cool. If you don't believe me, check out my contrast paint video. What we're looking to do here is get this on the table as fast as possible without any Slap Chop at all. Let's get painting. We'll start off with the model primed with black spray. Now I've used Chaos Black from Games Workshop. You can use whatever you want. And the first thing we're going to do is heavily dry brush this using Iron Warriors, which is a really nice dark silver, focusing on those raised areas, ignoring the underneath. Next, we're going to use Lead Belcher. Now I haven't washed the dry brush. I'm just going straight into it. And I'm going to focus on the most raised areas and particularly any large open panel spaces. And again, I'm looking to catch the parts of the model which face upwards. Then I'm going to take a soft makeup brush and just focus on those edges of the model. Now I'm using Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. You can use Stompo Silver if you haven't got Chrome. Like I said, I'm focusing on those sharp raised edges. When I've got all that done, I'm going to take some Nuln Oil and paint this over everything on the model. Now I'm using the new Nuln Oil, which runs into those recesses a little better. If you have the old Nuln Oil, that's fine. You just want to keep an eye on it that it doesn't pull too heavily in those bottom parts of the model. So get this painted all over the model. When that's completely dry, go back to that chrome or Stormo Silver and that soft makeup brush. And again, just try and pick up the raised and sharpest edges because this will really make it easier to get some highlights as we start to add colour. The first colour we'll do is all of the gold trim on the model and we're going to use Nasdreg Yellow Contrast Paint for this. So this is really easy. All we want to do is paint that Nasdreg Yellow over all the areas we want to be gold. So I'm going over all the trim, the knee pad and any detail and decoration that we want. It's just really important that you're careful not to get this into any of the parts you don't want to be gold. When that Nasdreg Yellow is completely dry, I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade. The first thing I'm going to do is paint over some of the chainmail to make it look dirtier and differentiate it from the silver armour. And then I'm going to paint it all over the Nasdreg Yellow because it'll give a little bit more depth to it and make it little look a little bit dirtier as well. Next up, we'll paint the boots, the undersuit, and any leather wraps using black Templar contrast paint. Now, don't put this on too thick. If you do, just clean it off with your brush, and it'll give you a nice automatic highlight. And obviously, be very careful not to get this in places where you don't want it. So just take your time. Moving on to the belt and the pouches, I want to differentiate the colour a little, so I'm going to use Garagax Sewer on all of the belt areas. And then for the pouches, I'm going to use Snakebite Leather. Now, this will go on really nicely, and it'll just cover everything up, leaving you with an automatic highlight as well, so you don't need to do any more to it. We'll use some Flesh Terra's Red on the scarbard again to differentiate a different leather colour. And then once that's dry, we're going to take some Wildwood and we'll use it to paint any horned elements before we come back and highlight them later. We need to brighten the cloth and organic areas, so I'm going to paint all of these with Zandri Dust. Now, you should be able to get away with two coats on this. Just take your time. You don't want to slather it on too thick because it'll hide the detail. When that's dry, we'll take some Screaming Skull and put a nice bright highlight over all of these areas. We're looking to pick up the sharpest edges, any knuckles on that little hand, edges of the cloth, etc. Because that'll give us a really nice base to do the next set of contrast paints. I'm going to take some Sigval Burgundy flat loincloth, which is a really nice rich colour and contrasts really nicely with the silver and gold armour and also gives a little bit of an idea as to the perhaps royal past of this knight. We'll paint any flesh areas using Gullum and Flesh. Now if you want to make it darker you can use something like Dark Oath Flesh but I'm just happy with this because it adds a little bit of definition. Remember we're looking for speed. While I've got that Xandri Dust and Screaming Skull on the palette I'm going to go back and highlight all of the horn areas as well. Basically putting some Xandri Dust down leaving Wildwood in the recesses and then highlighting the areas using Screaming Skull. I'll then take some Skeleton Hood and paint this over all of the horns just to blend them together a little bit and I'll also paint it around that cord on the loincloth just to add a little bit of definition into those recesses. I wasn't happy with that Stormcast helmet on the belt either so I rebased it using chrome from Vallejo Model Air. You can use any silver you want. I then painted it with Imperial Fist Contrast Paint and when that was dry I used some Reitland Flesh Shade over it as well and this gave it a more of a warmer gold look than the cold gold on the armour. I added some Black Templar to the straps to hold that helmet on and then I went back in with some Screaming Skull just to dot highlight that little bit of cord so it stands out a little bit from the background. The last thing to do is paint the runes on this hammer. I'm going to make them glow a little bit so I'm going to base them all with bold titanium white from Procryl. You can use any white that you've got. Once that's dry I'm going to take some Bile Red Contrast Paint and just only have a tiny bit on my brush and paint this into those recesses. And this isn't the best looking glow in the world but it'll just give you something that looks good on the tabletop about six foot away and there we go this is done and dusted and it's ready for the tabletop in hardly any time at all you can see by building up those layers with the metallics you can get a really nice effect using contrast paints over the top so i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like check out my other content here and i'll see you next time